Hello, welcome to our Varsity Sports preview of the uh, girls basketball season. We're going to talk about girls class A here with Jason and Dara. And Jason and Dara go online to midcoastsportsnetwork.com, check out Jason's blogs, and he has been doing work in the last month or so, putting together all kinds of previews, and that includes girls class A. Yeah, girls class A, uh, really, you can't talk very long about girls class A without talking about one team. Say Thomas Moore is going to win it. Good night. Well, that's that, Is that what everybody thinks. You've been able to do that over the last five years and give a pretty strong argument this year. I think there are some people and several coaches who think the run might be over for St. Thomas Moore. I, I, by the way, I'm not one of those people. I think uh, St. Thomas Moore has another run. In and their run, their state tournament run is what? Five in a row? Six out, Six of, the last out of the last seven? Six out of the last seven, yeah. And before that, just so people know, they didn't win a state title before that. They were not a superpower team until Brandon Candlin really transformed that team, you know, just in this last decade. So uh, Brandon Candlin, by the way, we did have a chance to sit down with him and uh, ask him a little bit about what he's got back, even though just one starter, they, they feel like they have some talent. You know, last year uh, certainly was uh, a great culmination of a good group of girls again. Um, you know, I was excited about, uh, you know, what, every year what a new group brings. and. Um, uh, you know, that's the thing this year, starting off with practices. Uh, you know, I emphasize to the girls that this is their time. It's not what happened last year. I'm bringing back only one starter. There's a lot of shoes to fill, and um, the important thing is, I think we had some good experience with some JV girls that are coming back. Uh, but uh, the next part of it is uh, the enthusiasm again of what young girls are coming up, uh, knowing what uh, has been happening the last few years and the excitement that they can bring and, and um, we're definitely looking forward to it and, and I've got some good juniors and a couple younger girls that I think are willing to step in and uh, it's going to be important these next three or four days to see where they fit. All right and everybody's going to be gunning for him Jandy and uh, we've got the top five in uh, girls A in South Dakota St. Thomas Moore in the media poll and then you had Lennox, Winner, Sioux Falls Christian and Miller in the top five. St. Thomas Moore, the defending champs. Lennox, winner, Christian, Miller. Didn't even make the state tournament last year, but they're yeah. highly regarded going into this season, right? Yeah, teams that won a lot of games, that you're right, didn't make the state tournament last year. St. Thomas Moore, though, let's start with them. Uh, people point to that one starter back, and sometimes you're, you, you just say, one starter back, yeah, they're, they're down. And a lot of people are. But that starter back is, is really important. Alex Candlin, Brandon's daughter, uh, a feisty player, doesn't necessarily fill up the stat sheet, but does everything that's asked of her. She is going to be very key. And then Haley Timmer, uh, a player they brought off the bench last year, a sophomore this year, she's going to be one of the next big-time players that comes through St. Thomas More. So how quickly she develops into a takeover type player. And then one Duffy left. One, yeah. <laughs> one Duffy left. Uh, there's obviously great, great Duffy's Mora and uh, Kira Duffy and Caitlin and, Caitlin and, and the whole family. And this is Marin, I believe. This is, is Marin coming through. Uh, not quite the same amount of length that like maybe Kira has, but a great post player, more in the mold of what they had last year. Um, so they they have some talent as far as post player, but that's one thing Brandon Candlin told us is that we just don't have the length that we're used to having on defense, where you can just disrupt offenses. Uh, with tremendous defense, they're going to have to work a little harder on their man-to-man -man defense. Well, everybody else is glad to hear that. So, yeah, talk about Lennox. All right, four starters back from a team that won 18 games last year. And Lennox in there at number two in the poll. Yeah, and a lot of these players were either freshmen or sophomore on that uh, team that went to the title game two years ago. Um, last year didn't quite make it to the title game, and I think Madison Vlastwin already has a thousand points for her career. Uh, she's only two years into her. Varsity career has two more years to go, so she could be one of those 2,000-point players we're talking about. But uh, Philippi, another great player that they have. So it's not just Madison Velastro. And a lot of coaches are pointing to Len Lennox as the team that could beat him. Winner won 19 games last year. They have four starters back. Four starters back with a team that's won that much. Uh, Larry Aker does a great job with the winner team. Morgan Hammerbeck, of course, one of their best athletes, leads their volleyball team and is now back to, to take over in basketball as well. You know way too much. No, you know the no, perfect amount about I know all, the these, perfect amount. all these teams. Sioux Falls Christian comes in there. Miller, uh, four starters back from a team that won eight game, uh, 18 games last year. Yeah, and for Miller, you get a player like Katie Fernholtz. I mean, she hits over 60% from the field. She is just a dynamic 
player in all aspects. She's going to lead that team, but uh, you've got Vonnegale Schlechter, another player who can get it done for Miller. They've got a lot more than just Katie Fernholtz. And I don't want to go over Sioux Falls Christian too quickly because I think a player everybody's going to know by the end of the year is Lexi Unruh. She uh, had a good year last year, but I think she kind of takes over as one of those dominant players in the class this year. Four starters back at Sioux Falls Christian as well. So Lennox and Winter and Christian and Miller, they've got a lot coming back from last year to chase St. Thomas Moore. What about Hamlin? Well, Hamlin had the best player maybe in their history of their school graduate, but they get all four other players back in the mix. Brent Alfson being the, the main part of that lineup back that people are going to be focusing on. But no Lexi Wadsworth for the first time in four years makes a big difference. But uh, they do have the rest of the supporting cast back and hope that Brent Alfson can take that next step up. West Central was third in the state tournament last year, won 19 games. What do they got coming back? Well, that's a team that knocked off St. Thomas More's winning streak last year, and everybody started to wonder, are they? Maybe they're a good team. And they yes, were they they good. were they were a good team. And uh, that's a team that kind of year in year out is bringing up good kids through the classes. And uh, I think they're in the mix. People are talking about West Central as uh, a team that could be in the top five throughout the year. Del Rapids could be good. Vermillion had a really good year last year, but lost uh, some. A lot, of, yeah. a lot to graduation. They do have a Plitzowite, Lexi Plitzowite back, Plitzow and, and uh, Casey Herbster. And Casey Herbster daughter. came off the bench last year. She could be one of the top post players in the class, and Lexi uh, needs to shoot a little bit better to become one of the, the best players in the class, but she's still young. Uh, she'll come along and be able to create her shot more this year. I think they're a team we're going to talk about in that next tier. Player to watch at Pine Ridge, Samantha Richard. Yeah, Samantha Richard is uh, – she – is one of the best players. A lot of times on the native schools, we don't hear a lot about some of these players, but Samantha Richard, um, yeah, she's one that you're going to want to check out if she plays around your area. Will Redfield be a sleeper? You know, Redfield could be a sleeper. Uh, they've got um, Ashley Roselle. Is it Ashley Roselle? I'm not sure. I'm it's, taking your word for I it. I think it's Ashley Roselle uh, who came on last year and really led that team, and they've got a lot of players back as well, and in some years, you just get these dark horses that come out of nowhere. Uh, they really came on in the second half of last year. I think Redfield uh, could be one of those teams that, that surprises us this year. They have five starters back from a team that went to the round of 16 last year. That is a note that I read. That's what I had in my notes. In your blog. So I'm sure I have it. I thought I would bring up Redfield. I'm sure I have it in my blog somewhere. Let's talk about the season getting started uh, for girls Class A on Friday and Saturday. Yeah. What are you up, looking forward to? Coming up in, uh, in this class – Always good games, but uh, this year I think the one that really sets the tone for the season is Lennox at Sioux Falls Christian. Um, that game's at Friday, 6.30. I think we're going to find out just how good, because Lennox didn't get off to a great start last year. I think if they get off to a win here, that would be a great start for them, and people will really uh, put them on notice as, as the team, maybe the team to beat in this class. All right, everybody gunning for St. Thomas Moore. Can anybody knock them off this year? We will find out. We will check it out next week here on Midco Sports Network once the season gets started in girls' class A.